Andy. Damn glad to see you. Glad to see you too. Hi guys. What's up everybody? So what are we talking about today? So for one, this is my partner here that's gonna help us in these next coming videos as we talk real estate. And we talk Rochester real estate, we talk Rochester, New York, and we talk about all things that are real estate and uh, in real estate investing as well. That'll be a big part of this. Yeah. So my name is Martin Grizzani and I'm one of the owners of Suplex Properties and Upstate Home Buyer. And we do a lot of different investing from single family to multifamily to large apartments to mobile home parks. So we're really kind of all over the place. And uh, I'm gonna get into all of those things throughout these videos. But really the most important piece to this whole show is Sandy over here. He's lying, and, it's not. And uh, we're a dynamic duo. So we, we, we are, uh, we really wanted to do these videos because one, I think it's gonna help us as we are on our journey in real estate, right? And uh, at the same time, hopefully it helps you guys get a little bit more information on, you know, why you should invest in real estate and why Rochester would be a good place to do so. So, Sandy, why don't you give us a little introduction on you? Yes. And how you found real estate. But why don't you start with just how, how you are, who you are. Who I am that. and, okay, yeah. cool. So my name is Cassandra Bradley. I also go by Sandy. And I'm a licensed real estate agent with Keller Williams. I've been licensed with them since 2017, officially started in 2018. So it's been about three years now. Um, I also do a lot of wholesaling as well um, with Marty. I would say probably about 35% of my wholesale business comes from working with him. Um, and we just got a check yesterday, so that was great. That was cool. That was cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, how I found real estate, or um, so, oh man, I don't want to get into a go way story. back. All righty. So about four or five years ago, um, I had a will from my grandfather. And I think I was 24 at the time, or 25 at the time. I'm, I'm gonna be 30 in a month now, from now. Um, and it was a small will, it wasn't a lot. It was somewhere around like $9,000. And at that time, I swear I was gonna buy me a house with that $9,000. It's not a little bit of money, but it's definitely uh, right. <laughs> not entirely life-changing. But I really did. And probably like most of you, most people who are, are getting into real estate they have some money saved and they're trying to figure if that can work for you or not um it actually did wind up working for me just a little while down the road but um so i got the will from my grandfather and um i had already kind of lived my life prior to that i bought a bmw i i splurged i went on vacation so when i actually got the ten thousand dollars i really wanted it to kind of change my life. Mm. So I figured that I was gonna buy a house with it. So lo and behold, I wasn't able to get a house with that $10,000. <laughs> but I wind up saving my money um, and turning it into more so like around 20, 25,000. So it took me like two years to save up. And then I finally started searching for a house. I went through every realtor in the book. I had, I went through like five realtors, never bought my house, cried, got to the closing table. The house, the house that I went for had liens, all this stuff. I was devastated, lost my job, lost my car. Everything just happened all at the same time. And then I'm sorry for people who are not religious. I am a little bit religious, but I had a conversation with God and he told me at that time that it wasn't time for me to get my house, but because of my experiences, it was time for me to help other people oh, find wow. their house. All right. So I'm sorry, Marty. Am I? Am I? This is perfect. Okay. I swear this is good. Okay, cool. So um, I then got. So from that point, um, I was working at this place, and I was actually doing cold calling. Um, uh, Where were you? Called, I was at Real Agent Pro oh, with Isaiah Colton. Yeah. I'm going to shout him out if he ever looks at this video. It's good sales. I started off at Real good Agent Pro. Good sales training. Yes, it was. A lot of good sales training. So I started off there. Um, I actually wound up getting fired from there, unfortunately. But there were a lot of people that gravitated towards me. 
And there was this one lady who gravitated towards me and she was like, Sandy, you can sell salt to a slug. I'm going to set you up with Joe Lavabera. And what happened to the flash? I don't know. But, I'll work on that. You keep going. Okay, cool. So I got set up with a guy named um, Joe Lavabera. And he really kind of started my, um, my wholesaling career. Um, he told me about meetings that I needed to go to, what I needed to do, network. And I would say that the number one thing for me was networking, which is actually how I found Martin. Um, there was a meeting that I, that, what, what time is it, Martin? Like seven o'clock in the morning we have to be there? Yep. So we wound up going to like a little breakfast coffee meeting. I met Martin along with a lot of other um, investors or people who are in real estate and that's what really helped push my career um, I'm also involved in Freer groups I'm also a real estate agent so all of these different um, networking opportunities is what really got me to where I am now um, so I own one house and I just bought um, an investment property and I do a bunch of wholesaling and deals so I'm gonna stop talking and Martin no Rogers, this is this is amazing, because I didn't know any of that. I know. Yeah, That's I didn't know right. any of that. And we've done 20 plus deals. So, you you know, it's it's always nice to hear how someone gets started in real estate. Yeah. Because everyone's got a different role. I know. Yeah. And I was briggity, briggity broke. Yeah. <laughs> broke. I'm talking about when I closed on my first house, I bought it for... 25,000 and I only had 17,000. I had no idea where I was going to get the money from and I pulled the trigger, gave them a $5,000 deposit and never looked back. And I, and I got that money at when I went to that closing table. Well, you know why you got that made made that happen, right? Why? You didn't have a plan B. I didn't. Yeah, that's, yeah, how, that's it. That's, that's how the magic happens. No plan Bs. So, and you know what's crazy is, you know, I, oh my goodness. I, there's more to the story I haven't even told, but I'm so happy that we're in Rochester market. Mm. Um, I've been doing research this year mm. about how huge our market is. I don't even know if that's where I'm for, tell. but right now we're number six in the nation. Um, we always kind of gravitate um, between uh, number one and number 10, I want to say. For um, investment properties? For just, or in all, just all in all, market Rochester high. market, how Got our it. market is. Um, and I think that when I was doing the research, so they were saying that it's a, it comes from a lot of um, uh, the hospitals. Mm, yeah. So we've got Strong, yep. we've got U of R, yeah. we've, the hospitals and the colleges are what really drives Rochester. Even though we don't have Kodak anymore, there's still a lot of companies out here. A lot of smaller companies, companies that right. make it up. Mm -hmm. And I think even since the coronavirus has happened, there's been even more people who are gravitating towards our city, especially coming from bigger cities like New York City, yeah. um, Philadelphia, Seattle. Um, as I did research, a lot of people were coming in because, you know, they want a bigger house and they want the white picket fence and they want their kids to run around and play and you just can't find that in those bigger cities. So I think that we're going to be growing even more um, now more than ever. So it's pretty cool. I'm excited. I'm excited. Keep being here. Yeah. Well, you know, I think part of this episode is really just to introduce ourselves. Um, Sandy obviously just absolutely crushed that out of the park and you know, you, you have to, you have to give a lot of information because it's there's a lot there. So I'm glad you did that. And you know, one of the reasons I got into real estate is because of just the freedom that it it does and it, it does give. So I started like just like you, I was on the phones doing cold calling. You were with who? CGI Communications. Oh uh, yeah. So I was cold at, calling for real estate. Well, we would call real estate agents and brokers, so I could. I was starting to get the lingo. Oh, okay. So you were calling. So you were doing a little bit of opposite. You were calling the agents. Yep. And I was calling the homeowner. You were calling the homeowners because the agent would sign, sign up, up for your stuff. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So we were calling realtors and brokers, and you know, one of the things I found is that these people owned real estate properties. So. As I was working my way up at CGI from being someone who just did the cold calling to somebody who was also making those sales at the company, you know, one of the things that I found was that, you know, when you're making money, you want to be able to do something smart with it. How good is that seltzer? 
It's pretty damn good. It's, pretty it's good. fancy. Yeah, it's fancy. It's full. It's, uh, it's super fancy. Red, ruby red grapefruit. Yeah, not bad. So part of that is, you know, finding things to invest in. Real estate was one of the things that we used as a vehicle. Actually, my partner Matt and I are, are the reason why we're even here. So that's uh, him and I. Thanks, stuff. Matt. So <laughs> Matt Thank McGuckin. you for my friend Marty. So actually, and that's a funny story. We can probably talk about that. You can that. talk about it. All right. Go ahead. So let's talk about that. I don't get to see Matt like that. But, no, but yeah, he loves Sandy though. <laughs> so the first deal was a property in the city and uh, of Rochester. And of course. What happened was it was uh, a tax foreclosure and it had been taken back or had been bought by a third party lien holder and that was American Tax Funding. Okay, I was just gonna, yeah. I, I wanted to be quiet, but I'm like, was it ATF? Yeah, it was ATF, Joan. <laughs> ATF, okay, let me stop. She, she's great, <laughs> down in Florida, but. Uh, oh, and you he, know her personally. Oh, well, I didn't know her. Look at you, you got lot connections. Of phone, Let lot of phone me calls. find out. A lot, okay. lot of phone calls between Joan and I, wondering, you know, <laughs> Marty, when are you closing on this thing? <laughs> so, long story short, it was 28500 but it was a nice house. It, the tenant had been there for 12 years. Oh, wow. And she wanted to stay, and she had been paying. How I knew that she had been there and she had been paying is that... nosy. Of course. Yes. And I'm going to find out everything about that property. But at the same time, my brother-in-law was the property manager of that property. Oh, uh, who's your brother-in-law? Scott Zeppin over at White House Properties. Okay, okay. So long story short, Scott told me, Marty, this is a no-brainer property, and... The lady loves it. She wants to stay there. She pays, you know, eight hundred dollars a month, and we go. All right. Well, this seems like a great deal. I mean, and if you look at all the different rules of real estate, from the one percent rule to the two percent rule, that the two percent rule fit completely. And, and for people who don't know what the two percent. Because I don't rule, know what the two percent. All right. So here's the two percent rule. So the two percent rule is this: you want your rent to be two percent. At, the, at least of what you purchased the property. So if you bought the house for $50,000, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you're getting at least $1,000 in rent. Excuse me. Because 2% of a thousand, or that would be- uh, Right, I see the math. You see yeah, the math? Yeah, I see the math. Because if it's a $100,000 property- Then it would be- 2000 two Okay. Yep. So, in Rochester, you can find these deals. Oh, you can find them all the time. Maybe not so much the uh, hundred thousand to get two thousand. All of those those are there for like maybe student rentals, rooming housing, mm -hmm. maybe some section. There's eight. certain areas of the city that will that you will get that. So, out. Certainly, but yes. you're more likely to find this in like the maybe like I will say like the twenty to the eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollar range. You can mm -hmm. find two percent actually. It's more than 2%. It'd be more like 3 4 5% mm -hmm. on some of these. So anyway, that's kind of our uh, little bit of math there. But part of that was finding those kind of deals. We wanted to make sure if we were going to be buying a property that the rent was certainly going to cover most of the expenses and get us a good amount of cash flow. But back to the story, when we got to closing day, it was 28500 That's what we thought You know, we could mortgage. We said, all right, so we only need to you know, put up 20% down and... That's not that bad. That's Did you guys be... have the money? No. We, uh, <laughs> long story short, again, we got to closing and they said, no, it's 28500 That's like you, that's cash. Like that's the deal. Like you don't break this up into mortgage payments. Like you don't get a mortgage. You thought you were doing a more. Yeah. How old were you? Uh, 21, 22. Oh, God. So before that though, we had called banks and we were like, yeah, we just need to get a mortgage for twenty eight five. Like, we don't do anything less than fifty thousand. Right. So, I took all the money. I actually I just met with an IRA guy, or I met with a financial planner. I was giving him money for an IRA. Just started it. You're so smart at twenty one years old. Look at 22, you. Twenty two, maybe twenty three. I can't remember what it was. Well, I'm gonna get my IRA soon. Don't worry, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. You don't need to. You're in real estate. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> What happened was, we, we, I basically go, hey, I know I just gave you that check for like $20,000. It was all the money I ever had. I go, I need that back. I have to close on this property because I didn't want to look bad to Joan right. at ATF. Yeah, and I bet you that was saved, a, oh my gosh, huge relationship relationships. To my brother-in-law, Scott, yeah. to my lawyer who I just had Who was your lawyer? Charles Santoli. Oh, okay. Yeah, Charles yeah, yeah, Santoli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is Charles now? He was at NACA. 
I know. But, but now he's at Black and Lager. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. So they, they he, he, yes. was, he was really the only person doing a lot of the real estate law. The non-evictions. Okay, okay. Okay, so <laughs> I go, Matt, I go, we, we got to figure this out. He goes, I have $10,000. We can make this thing happen. So we pooled all our money, Matt and I. I think he had to clear out his bank account. Nice. I cleared out my bank account. Nice. And we closed on it. So, yeah. And we you, still have it. You closed on that thing by the hair on your chinny yep. chin chin. Because guess what? No plan B. Right. Just like you. Right. No plan B. I closed on that house with the hair on my chinny chin chin. <laughs> I'm telling you, oh my goodness. I went through eight months of renovations. Uh, I had no kitchen in my house for eight months. Talk, mm. talk about talk about sacrifice. That's sacrifice. Okay, let's keep on track, though. Um, I think we could do videos for a very long time. We anyway. could. We could. But, um, uh, yeah, so that's the introduction. And I think uh, next episode, we'll talk about what? Well, are we done talking about how Rochester is really hot? What well, do you we'll talk, have to say? Well, that's our introduction well, for today. Right. But what we'll do is on the next episode, we'll talk about Rochester and uh, why you should invest in Rochester real estate. To be continued. Thank you. Why Rochester right. real estate.